So our first speaker is Supervisor John Joya, who's both a uh, supervisor of Contra Costa County, a member of the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, and also a member of the Air Resources Board <coughs> representing local government. Uh, let me first start by thanking the League for holding this event. This is really important, and all of you play an important role in helping shape public opinion and educate the public on the issue of climate change. I think the only way we are going to meet our 2050 goals on reducing greenhouse gas emissions is going to be a continued change in public opinion on this issue, and you are going to play an important role in that. And I want to especially thank um, the League of Women Voters in my area, West Contra Costa County. They hold their regular meetings often at my office, so I know how hard they work, and I know uh, a few of you are here, so I know how, uh, how important uh, it is to come together. And, and I get a chance to work on climate change issues on three levels, the state level, on the Air Resources Board, the regional level with the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, and then the county level on our Board of Supervisors. And let me start by saying that it is good to see that there's continued to be a shift in public opinion. There was a poll that was just released, and, um, and it highlights the role of education and, and your role. And that's, it just came out, and it was that 74% of Americans um, believe the federal government should be doing a substantial amount to combat climate change. That's great news. Two thirds, of Americans have said that they're more likely to vote for candidates who campaign on fighting climate change. Um, and that, get this, half of Republicans feel that. So that's important, that's going up. And here's also, uh, I think, an important fact. The number of Americans who believe climate change is caused in some way by human activity is growing. Uh, in 2011, it was at 72%, and the new poll was at 81. So um, that's good news. Um, but we've got a long ways to go to meet the 2050 goal. You all know AB 32 set uh, a goal for 2020 that we would reduce greenhouse gas emissions to 1990 levels. The good news is that we're going to achieve that target. In fact, there was a, a study just released funded by the Air Board uh, done out of, uh, by a scientist at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab that said, um, yes, confirmed that we're going to meet that goal. And in fact, with the policies currently in place and others being proposed, that we would probably by 2030 get to, you know, on the way toward um, uh, somewhere between 30 and 40 percent below 1990 levels, but that we are, we would be fall far short of the 80 percent goal by 2050. Um, and it's important to note that 80 percent goal by 2050 is an executive order. The legislation that established the 2020 goal is a hard, fast rule of the law. The legislature is going to be considering um, moving towards setting a midterm goal. The science tells us we need to stabilize climate warming 2%, uh, 2 degrees Celsius or 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit by, um, by 2050. That's why we need the 80% uh, below, below 1990 levels. All of you are going to be very important part of getting the legislature to pass a law to be signed by the governor which sets a midterm goal of 2030 and a 2050 goal in legislation because that goal now is an executive order so we need even more strength in the law to get there um, so how are we getting to 2020 uh, we hear a lot about cap and trade cap and trade really is only a, a smaller part of how we get to the 2020 goal so just to give a, a little perspective so cap and trade gets us about um, uh, a little under 20% of the way to the 2020 goal. Um, something called the low carbon fuel standard, which is to lower the carbon <laughs> intensity of our fuels, gets us about 15% of the way. You're going to hear more about the sustainable community strategy. Um, toward 2020, that only gets us about under 5%. It'll be more. It'll be more significant for our 2030 or 2050 goal. So. Um, clean cars, renewable energy, all of those are an important part of getting us to the 2020 goal. Um, the governor in his uh, inaugural address really laid out some of the big picture strategies that are needed to get us to um, 2050. Um, uh, increasing the amount of renewable energy by 2030 um, 
to 50%, doubling the energy efficiency of existing buildings, also by 2030, reducing petroleum use in cars and trucks by 50%. These are all um, going to be essential to get to 2050 um, goals. And also, he talked about um, reducing short-lived climate pollutants like black carbon, which you heard a little bit about. So what is the Air Resources Board doing? So the Air Resources Board is going to be uh, developing some recommendations for a 2030 midterm goal, which hopefully will get enacted in, in legislation um, to have a stronger force of law. So that's sort of our task right now. Um, and the governor's uh, major points are, are going to be, um, uh, there's going to be a specific strategy on how to implement those points. You know, 35 years away seems like a long time. It really isn't. Um, so there's, there's a lot to be done, but let me sort of put out some optimism. Um, to show that we can come along, we can go a long ways in 35 years. It was it was about 35 years ago that catalytic converters started uh, came on the market um, and started appearing in cars. Over the last 35 years, cars um, are now 99% cleaner than they were um, when catalytic catalytic converters were first installed. So I think that gives us sort of a perspective that things can happen in 35 years. In fact. The sort of research shows that most of the, the strategies that we can use to get to a 2050 goal are out there, mostly, not all, in what the commercially available technology today. It's going to take um, political will. It's going to take a change in policy. It's going to take changes in our own behavior and how we live, how we grow, how we drive. So all of that. But the good news is that it can be done with mostly the commercially available technology that's out there today. Um, it is important, I think, to note that probably the, I mean, the most important focus is going to be on the transportation and energy sectors, because it is those two sectors that contribute about 60% of the greenhouse gas emissions. So, um, for example, I drove here today in an electric vehicle, although there was no charging station here. Um, however, let me say, when the new regional government uh, building is built in San Francisco, it's going to have electric vehicle charging stations. A perfect example how the Bay Area is building is going to be building even more infrastructure for um, uh, to support electric vehicles and hydrogen fuel cell uh, as well. And every time I, I know I see Chris Peoples here from AC Transit, I always want to acknowledge because I think you know AC Transit has the largest uh, fleet of hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles in the country, and they have a hydrogen fuel cell charging station in Emeryville, which I, I used when I was uh, sort of test driving a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. So we are well ahead of the country here in California, and um, as our keynote speaker said, um, we, I think folks are looking to what we're doing in California, and hopefully looking at the policies that we are adopting on a federal level. The problem is that if you look at the makeup of Congress, um, it's hard to see uh, a federal, uh, an overall federal strategy being enacted anytime soon, which is exactly why your work and the work of um, organizations, advocates across this country are so important. It's going to take changing public opinion to support the policies at the federal level. I think not unlike what's happened in this country about um, people's thinking on same-sex marriage. It's, it, th and that public opinion shift occurred pretty quickly. We're going to need that public opinion shift to occur pretty quickly on climate change if we're going to be effective, again, at um, initiating policies that get us to the 2050 goal. Um, there's a lot, there were a lot of really good questions, and I hope you ask them of our panel, because I know the three of us um, are going to be able to answer some of those questions um, as well. And, and I'm very impressed by the level of knowledge that I've heard. And um, um, again, um, this is a partnership on how we get to 2050. Let me just say, um, Oregon and Washington are actually the other two states that are um, more aggressive than others at climate change policies. And the governor of the state of Washington, Jay Inslee, 
has been um, looking at an aggressive climate change program there. And what we're beginning to see um, are, is the oil industry uh, in those states trying to stop um, uh, the enactment of climate change laws. We've been successful here in California, and our, the cap and trade program that exists in California is now linked to Quebec. The hope is that as other states, like Oregon and Washington, go down this road and enact a, um, a cap and trade program with statewide caps on carbon, that we could join markets together and be that much more effective at um, reducing greenhouse gas emissions and um, slowing climate change. So again, look forward to the good questions you have, and you've got a great panel, all these folks were, this is a, it's a partnership effort here in the Bay Area, and I, I am really honored to be working alongside many of you and folks here on this panel who are really doing a lot, really playing a large role in making us successful. Thanks. Thank you.